I have chosen you twelve as my apostles. Don't feel any different? I don't need you to feel anything to do great things. What is stirring in your hearts? In the middle of such division and unrest, is Father God being revealed to you? Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. A scourge of false prophecy must stop. Jesus, if you do not renounce your words, we will have no choice but to follow the law of Moses. I am the law of Moses. The hair for Jesus of Nazareth. More valuable than gold, more precious than rubies. Force them out. We are still Rome. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. I'm the one who caused their hunger. I should be the one to feed them. If that doesn't make you want to watch that show again for like the 15th time, which would be about what it would be for me, I don't know what will. I, uh, I, every time I watch it, it just gets better and better every time. So here's what I want to do. What a, day to, what a way to start off today. I want you to point to, the next, to a person next to you and say, on your worst day, you're still a child of God. Go ahead, do that. Now that's good news, is it not? Because I don't know about you, but I, all my days aren't good days. Anybody have worse days in their lives? Yeah, and so it's kind of nice to be reminded that even on my worst day, I'm still a child of God. And so if you don't hear anything else that gets said today, if that's all you leave here with, that's all you need to know, right? In fact, we're done. We'll just take that and leave now. How about that? So just kidding, just kidding. Don't clap back there, Ed. So so here's the thought-provoking question I have for you this morning. If you could change one thing, about yourself, what would it be? If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Because we all have at least one thing uh, that we don't like about ourselves. One thing that, uh, that we feel kind of holds us back from, from maybe being who we were created to be, maybe who we really want to be or called to be, whatever word that you want to use there, phrase. And we feel like if we could change this one thing, just this one thing about who we are, it would make us maybe more likable, uh, more acceptable, more successful, more confident. You know what word you would use there. Like if I could just change this about me, things would be so much better in my life. If only we could change that one thing. But what if... But what if that one thing that we would change is the one thing, in fact, is the very thing that gives us our greatest opportunity in life to be who we were really created to be? What if that one thing that we would love to be able to change about our lives, and some of us, we've been waiting our whole lives and hoping our whole lives that it would change, but what if that one thing is the thing that gives us the greatest opportunity in life to be who you were created to be? And what if that one thing that makes us, that we would change, uh, what if that one thing is the thing that makes us more likable, more acceptable, more successful? What if that one thing that often makes us feel less confident about ourselves uh, is the thing that gives us the power to be who we really, really are? What did you think about that? Let me just say welcome to uh, week two of part two of the Chosen series. Uh, This is a series for us that was inspired by the streaming uh, popular uh, streaming program called The Chosen. 
and, uh, and we're using it to kind of take a deeper look at some of the men that Jesus actually chose. Now, the, the show is, all, is really about Jesus, but to understand who Jesus was, we have to understand who he chose and why he chose them. And so we're kind of doing a, a deeper dive in looking at these 12 men that, uh, that actually God chose. Uh, we know them as the disciples, or maybe more accurately, we know them as the apostles. And uh, we're looking at each of these guys because what we're seeing is that their story is what? Is our story. You see, these guys often get put on these pedestals, and, and we've seen pictures of them, and, and we think that they're just these, you know, bigger-than-life people. You know, we see them with their big flowing robes or, you know, these big Bibles and a cross in their hand, and some pictures, you, 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 if you look close enough, it looks like they have this halo around their head, like they were just these perfect people, and that that's why God chose them. But what we're finding out is that is not why they were chosen. In fact, uh, they weren't chosen because of who they were or what they had done. They were chosen simply because of who Jesus is. And, and as we get to know these folks, we get to know more about who Jesus is and, and the role that he can play in our lives as well. Today, we're going to look at a guy that, to be honest with you, uh, we know pretty much absolutely nothing about this guy. In fact, it's one of the, the, the characters that, and one of the, the original disciples that when you look at him and, and trying to do a message on him, you're like, well, there's just really not anything there. We know him. Uh, he has a couple of names that he goes by in the Bible. Uh, James the Less. Uh, James, uh, 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 little James, or James the Less, uh, James the son of Alphaeus. These are the, th- the names that have been attributed to him that allow us to identify him. Uh, there's a lot of speculation about who he was, why he was called little James or, or James the Less. Some think because there were two James uh, that made up the followers, those original 12s, that, that he was the, the smaller of the two, and so it had to do uh, simply with size. Uh, I remember growing up in West Virginia, there was some new people who moved in down the street from us, and they had, a, uh, they had three kids, and their middle son, his name was Jeff, and he was probably, I don't know, five or six years older than I was and probably two or three feet taller. And so he became known as Big Jeff, and I was Little Jeff. And so some people think that that's why uh, James was called that, because the other James was so much bigger than him. Some think it was because the other James was so much more important. We know a little bit more about him than we know about the, the Little James. And so they think maybe it had to do with importance. And, and, but at the end of the day, uh, we have no idea. There's a lot of speculation as to who he might have actually been. Uh, Some think that he could have actually been the half-brother of Jesus. Others make it out, though, that they think more that he was the cousin of Jesus. Uh, Some think that he was the brother of Matthew, the guy that we looked at last week. But uh, again, I just say all of these are simply theories, people trying to figure out and, and connect the dots. And at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter who he was. What matters is what he did. In fact, that's true of each of these guys. Uh, we know that he was one of the, the 12 apostles, one of the 12 uh, uh, disciples of Christ. We know that he was one of the ones who was probably closer to Jesus than anybody else uh, was uh, as far as the 12 goes, and, and that he had this special connection. And he went on, and, and because of his determination, as well as the other 11, uh, we sit here today because of their determination to make sure that the story of Jesus Christ carried on, that people knew that he came back from the dead to prove that he was who he claimed that he was and could do what he said he could do, because of their faithfulness in doing that, because of little James's faithfulness in doing that, we sit here today having the conversation that we're having. But in keeping with this series, what is there to learn about him or from him? What is it that makes his story our story? Well, today we're going to take a little different approach. Uh, If you go to the Chosen's website, uh, the the streaming series, uh, they have this blurb there. It says, while the Chosen is based on true stories of the Gospels of Jesus Christ, backstories and some characters or dialogue have been added without compromising the true story of the Gospels. Now, I tell you that because of where I'm going to go next and where we're going to go with this today. Uh, There's a scene... Uh, in season three, it's episode two, that to date is one of the most 
powerful scenes in the whole series. And I say it to date because this thing is far from over and, and each series, each season just seems to get a little bit better. So I don't know about you, it just kind of keeps me hanging on. But, I, but this one is huge. And, and the reason this scene became so popular is because it, it is real for every one of us. Uh, there's a conversation that takes place between little James and Jesus. And, and, and again, it's as for real for us as it can be because what, what happens in this scene is something that every single one of us have wrestled with, questions that we've had. And it has to do, really, th- this scene has to do with my opening question re- and remarks about changing that one thing about yourself. That if you could change one thing, what would it be? Now, we're going to watch it, but first let me just set it up uh, real quickly. Uh, so James, in the show, is born with a, a physical challenge, one that, that gives him a, a limp, if you will. And, um, and it, it, it's one that, as you watch this, you'll see that if there were anything in his life that he could change, this would be it. In the scene right before uh, the one that we're going to watch, Jesus gathers all of his disciples together, and he, uh, he's about to send them out to put into practice the very things that he's been teaching them. And uh, in fact, Matthew 10, 1, it says this, Jesus called his disciples together, the 12 disciples to him, and he gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. So he's called these 12 men together, and he says, guys, I'm going to pair you up. I'm going to send you out. And he said, in doing so, I'm going to give you authority. And not only authority, but I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you authority to drive out impure spirits out of people. And I'm going to give you the power to heal people. I'm going to, get to, to, to heal every disease and every sickness. Now, while this scene in and of itself for me was a very powerful scene, uh, I, I don't know, there was just something about it that, that I connected really well with it, but the scene that follows uh, was, was even more powerful, and I, I want to show that to you today because, again, this is where uh, his story meets our story. And, and again, I want to say this, uh, you won't find this in the Bible. Uh, this is one of those backstories. This is one of those filler pieces that they put in uh, to help connect us to the people. I love the word that, that uh, uh, Dallas likes to use. He says, we use the word plausible, meaning uh, things that we've added to this are very plausible. They very well could have happened the way that they did. But we don't always know because the Bible doesn't give us all the in-between stories sometimes and the things that we read. But because of the research and stuff that they've done, they feel very good about what they've, I'll say, added to the story to help enrich the story for us and help us to connect with even more. So whether or not this happened or or James was actually this way, we have no idea. But here's what I know. Uh, You're going to connect. If you haven't seen this, you are going to connect with this conversation that Jesus has with little James. So let's take a look. Master. Little James. May I have a moment? Of course. So how does that make you feel? Ever been where James is? Wishing you could change that one thing? (laughs) And wondering why God hasn't answered your prayer, or maybe you haven't even prayed about it. Maybe you've just kind of stayed in the background or on the sidelines, kind of hiding from others as you wonder why God made you the way that he made you. I mean, you've heard that he's called you, he loves you, you matter, you're here to make a difference, but you look at that one thing and you're just like, but it keeps you sidelined, it keeps you holding back. Well, it turns out that uh, little James's physical challenge wasn't just something that was created uh, for the show. It turns out that this is actually something that in real life he was actually born with, something that he had to deal with his entire life. And so now what I want to do is I want you to hear the real story connected to this 
as the actor uh, Jordan uh, Ross uh, tells his side or, or his struggle with this one thing that he wished he could change in his life. And when the, when the clip that we're about to watch ends, and it's a little long, I'm going to warn you that now, it's several minutes long, but, but when the clip ends, we're going to go right into a song. Um, and so I want you to, especially when we get to the, that song, I want you to just think about that one thing that you wish that you could change and how maybe that one thing could be, could be the most powerful thing in your life. Let's take a look. So I'm glad we can ask you and that, we're, that we're doing this. You know, it's really powerful. Dallas had asked me a while ago if I would want to be healed, if I had the opportunity. I even have chills talking about it now. Psalms 139, 13 through 18. For you created my inmost being, God. 
You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. And all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. God wants you to know today that you're not a problem. You're not a mistake. You're not something or someone who needs fixing or solved. You are perfectly made, perfectly loved. You're perfectly human. And that's the truth about every single one of us. No matter what our weakness is, no matter what that thing is that if we could change, we would change. And as it relates to that, while the story of James, we don't know if that was really his story or not, but we could definitely connect with it. But there is somebody in the Bible who, who did struggle with something in their lives. We don't know what it is. The person doesn't tell us. It's the Apostle Paul. Uh, someone who's been used by God to probably influence the world more than anybody else, especially when it comes to the gospel. But there was something that, that Paul about Paul's life that he would have given anything to change because in his mind it was holding him back from being and doing what God had called him to do. I want you to listen to his words. In 2 Corinthians 12, 8, it says this. Paul says three times, I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power, God says, is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, Paul says, for Christ's sake, I delight. Everybody say delight. I delight in weakness. I delight in this thing that I would have given anything for God to change. I delight in this weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. Why? Because when I am weak, then am I strong. Because when I am weak, then am I strong. That one thing that you want to get rid of, change could be the very thing and it's not could be it is the very thing that God wants to use in your life to demonstrate his power one in you and through you now up until this point maybe that one thing has held you back all because you've let it do so but after today that's not going to be the case because with me you're going to give that thing that weakness, that limp, that whatever it is that you've been holding on to for so long, you're going to give it to God. And instead of dreading it, like me, with me, you're going to learn to delight in it because we know it's the thing that God is going to work the most in our lives. It's His power that we're going to get to experience in us and through us as we give that to Him. So I'm going to ask all of you just to go ahead and stand with me this morning. And I'm sure just about every single one of us has something, but for some of us, man, as soon as we started, as soon as I asked that question this morning, man, that, that just rang a bell. And, and you immediately knew what that thing was because all of your life you've been dealing with it. You've been, you've been using it and, and, and it's been holding you back and you've been letting it hold you back. Well, today I'm going to ask you to just hold out your hands before God as if you have that thing in your hands and I'm going to ask you to, to give it to God. So would you pray with me this morning? Father, this morning we come before you. 
God, this thing that we've been holding on to, this thing that we feel like has been holding us back, keeping us from being who we are. God, we recognize this morning that it is that, that thing is exactly who we are. And God, we are perfectly made. We are perfectly human. We are perfectly loved. And so God, we want to give this thing to you. God, we don't want to dread it anymore. Father, you know what mine is. And you know what every other person's is this morning. And so God, we offer this to you to no longer dread it, but to delight in it. Because God, we know that in our weakness, you are made strong. In our weakness, we are made strong through you. God, this thing that that has held us back for so long, God, as we give it to you, it's the very thing that you want to use to demonstrate your power in us and through us. God, this thing that we've experienced, you said that you use our weaknesses, our struggles to encourage others. And so God, where we've, we've, we've hidden away from sharing our struggles with others, God, we're not gonna do that anymore after today. God, we're gonna be honest with ourselves. We're gonna be honest with others because we're gonna find that others are struggling just like we are. And Father, you can use that in huge ways. God, that is the power that you give us. That is the power of our story when our story is your story. And so God, take us and use us and use this thing. God, as only you can. Father, we love you, we praise you, we thank you that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God, somehow we know that, even though we struggle and have questions and we compare ourselves, but God, deep down, there's something that that, that this rings true with every one of us. We know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made because you made us. God, before one single day of our lives came to be, God, you ordained our days. God, you made us who we are. And there are people in our lives who need to experience your love and grace and power like we have. And so God, through our weakness, today may we become strong. May we become powerful as we no longer dread it, but we delight in this thing. Father God, we love you. Thank you for your power in our lives. And we all agreed together and said, amen. God bless you guys. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you next Sunday.